So, Father, we believe that we are your kids and that you've got an awesome plan for the Sunshine Coast. And, Lord, here we are, just a bunch of people, but, Lord, you want to use us in an amazing way as well as other people on the coast. But, Lord, you just want to pour out your spirit and you want to activate, motivate, encourage, lift us up, whatever it is, my God. And for that, we'll just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. I believe that we're also, I shared a little bit last week about sometimes we come under attack. And the enemy comes into attack because he knows something that he knows it because he knows because he knows that his days are numbered. He knows that he doesn't have long and he's doing everything he can to pour out his fury and his wrath on the church. He's also, I believe that we're living in, a, in an hour when there are many, many voices. There are many things that are going on saying this and that. And I know in my own life, I know when you come under under. Uh, attack or, and I don't like using that word because we are the attackers really. But the enemy comes to discourage. He comes to put negative thinking in your mind. And I believe that that is his greatest weapon, that he puts negativity into our thinking. And when we start thinking never negativity, when we start thinking quitting, when we start thinking giving up, when we start thinking I'll never make it, when we start thinking all those thoughts, well, then the enemy just keeps bombarding you and bombarding you and bombarding you until just inside yourself there's hopelessness gets around our lives. That's what he does. But he knows his days are numbered and he's attacking the church. But I want to tell you this, that greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. And that the greater one is also pouring out his anointing. He's pouring out his power. And if we can just somehow or other understand, and, and, and I love what you said again, how long, how long before we realize, how long before we really understand how much God wants to take us by the hand and lead us through and lead us out into victory. And when we come to that realization and we, and we somehow or other get hold of that, then I believe God can do amazing things in our life. So Satan knows his days are numbered. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 and 29, it says this. And it says, When he had come to the other side of the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. I want you to understand that these two demons had a purpose and had an assignment, and their assignment was to stop people from coming that way. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. And there's demonic forces on the Sunshine Coast that are assigned to stop people from coming to the knowledge of Christ. We, the church, have got to understand that we can do something about it. We're not just sitting back passively, but these two demon forces were there exceedingly fierce so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out saying, what have we to do with you, Jesus, son of God? Have you come to torment us before the time? The enemy knows that he has a time. I want you to also have a look with me in the book of Mark. Mark chapter uh, 5. Father, we just ask you to help us. And it says this in verse 1. It says, When they came to the other side, the sea of the country of the Gadareans, when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwellings among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with chains because he was often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. 
and cried out with a loud voice saying, and, and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. There was a large herd of swine was feeding near and the mountains, and the demons begged him, saying, send us, send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Father, I pray today that you would help us to break strongholds in our minds, strongholds in our thinking, things, my God, that stop us from penetrating into the supernatural power of a living God. Lord, to lay hold of the, every promise that you've ever given to us. Lord, we realize that the enemy has a time. And Lord, we are in a time right now, in a season right now, where there's a window of opportunity for us to go out and proclaim. And my God, we want to be involved with what you're doing in the coast right now. And I ask you, Lord, those that have got an ear to hear, let them hear what your Spirit is saying to us in Jesus' name. See, when the enemy came and, and he started to speak to Jesus there, the legion didn't resist Jesus. They knew Jesus had power over them. They, they, that was not even in the question. But what they did was they tried to reason with him. They tried to reason. They tried to trick him. Don't cast us out of the country. We've got an assignment here. When Jesus began his ministry, the enemy came and, and started to uh, declare things uh, and, and started to share some things. And I want you to have a look in the book of Luke chapter 1. Uh, sorry, yeah, Luke. It's okay to read the Bible in the church? <laughs> Luke chapter 4, verse 1, I want to go to. How many people believe we serve a risen Savior? It says here in Luke uh, 4, verse 1, it says, And Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned to the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. It was in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards when he had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. See, the, the enemy will come and try to trick us, try to con us, try to encourage us to do something that will take us away from the reality. And Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, and the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whoever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Here's, the, here's an easy way out for you, God. Here's an easy way out for you, Jesus. You won't have to suffer. You won't have to go to the cross. You won't have to do that. I'm ready to give it to you on a plate. I'm ready just to hand it over to you. All you've got to do is worship me. We know what would have happened if that would have gone on. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will give his angels charge over you to keep you. And in, their, sorry, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now the, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him till an opportune time, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Amen. I want to tell you today, if the enemy is attacking you, he's going to be sorry because you're going to return in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? If you can keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. 
Religion didn't resist. Uh, it, it didn't resist. He just tried to trick, tried to do things. I want to tell you, there's one thing that you and I need to understand, that God has given us authority. We have authority over the enemy. The devil knows he's defeated. The church is yet to understand that we have this authority. God wants to restore to the church all, all, all. I said all, not part of, not a little bit, but God wants to restore everything, all, all, all that she had ever known in the New Testament days. One of the things that was in there, and I was talking to some of the uh, elders in the church, and, and uh, David said these words, in the New Testament days, there was great grace, great power, and great fear. I only, I only had great grace and great power in my notes before then. <laughs> so I've added fear. Because it's true, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. There's not one word, there's not one thought, there's not one thing that, enters, that, that goes from our mind or our mouth that God doesn't know. And sometimes we think we can just get away with stuff but God sees and He knows everything. I believe that God wants to give us everything, pour it out again upon the church because it's been stolen. And God is the God of restoration. Do you believe that today? Are we open for it? Are we ready for what God is about to do? Are we ready for what God is about to do? I said. We think we are, but are we really ready? Can we be cautious without being critical? Critical, a spirit will smash and destroy a move of God. There's one thing that I've understood and in my time in ministry. It's so very, very easy to be critical of something that I don't understand and find fault or whatever it might be. But can we be cautious without being critical? Can we be discerning without being destructive? Words can be very, very destructive. People can speak things out of their, out of their emotions or out of their lack of understanding. Destroy something that God wants to do. Can we have an open mind? I'm not saying being stupid, accepting everything, but can we have an open mind? Can we, can we say, hey, God, are you in this? Are you part of this? Don't cling to tradition over truth because only truth will set you free. How many people want to be free? See, sometimes some of our thinking is what binds us. Some of our past, whatever it might be. Something that somebody that you've admired, perhaps, respected even, that had a doctrine or a philosophy and because they've said it, you've, you've just accepted it. There's so many different concepts of end times that drives me crazy. Other things, healings, deliverances. Can a Christian have a demon? Are they oppressed, depressed, or some other pressed? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you this. There are people that are in the church that can have a demon. <laughs> but perhaps they are a part of the company that Jesus said, depart from me, I don't know you. But we get all hooked up on oppression, depression, possession, some other possession. Because somehow or other, somewhere along the line, somebody spoke into our lives. And I can remember years ago and people that, a lot of the, the teaching ministry that came over from New Zealand, 
And I love in New Zealand and I love the teaching ministry, but there were things there that they say, you need somebody to speak into your life. And I, man, I used to shudder. Because a lot of the things that said it didn't gel and other things there you would just accept and you find yourself being bound by it. I want to tell you, friends, you only need the Holy Ghost to speak into your life. Whatever I say and preach from this pulpit, don't just swallow it. Find out what God says about the thing. I've got my opinion. I've got my thought. But I want to tell you, if ever there's a time we need to hear what God wants us to hear, it has to be in this hour that we're living in. Because there's so many voices, so many doctrines, so many philosophies, so many traditions, so many denominations. Always amazes me how we'd call it a denomination when the word starts with demon. I believe that God is pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. Do you believe that today? All over the world, people from all walks of life are being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Many of these people that have been filled today, Muslims, Hindus, all different types of religions, all these people have had no connection with Pentecostal churches. They haven't heard the doctrine. They haven't been conned. And God hasn't changed. He's still pouring out His Spirit. <coughs> Nancy and I, when we first got saved and we wanted to get water baptized, Nancy wasn't too keen on it, but she, well, she was convinced now that this was a thing that she should do. We hadn't had any connection basically with the Pentecostal church or anything like that. They were just the people that were water baptizing people. Church that we went to sprinkled. But I wanted to get water baptized as a believer. And Nancy came and we both got water baptized in the font together. And as we came out of the water, Nancy began to speak in other tongues. Her Seventh-day Adventist mother almost had a fit. <laughs> When she came out and started to, she talked in tongues for hours. Never stopped. She's still doing it. <laughs> but but her mother was so offended, and and you see what happens at times is she because of her offense, she said to Nancy, "You are so embarrassing." Nancy was, she was embarrassed, but she was trying to put it onto Nancy this, because this experience that she had then may not have had the same significance if she could see it as something that embarrassed people. She was so full of the Holy Ghost, she couldn't care less who she embarrassed. She talked in tongues all the way home in the car. I hadn't been filled with the Holy Ghost, by the way. I just got wet. <laughs> We go home and we get beside the bed to pray. And I said, God bless me and blah, 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 two, my two-minute headache prayer. <laughs> Nancy went around the world. She prayed for anything that moved. And if it didn't move, she started moving it. <laughs> About a half an hour, three quarters an hour, it might have even been more. I, I crawled up into bed. <laughs> she was still going. <laughs> I don't know what time she stopped because I went to sleep. You see, God, everybody say God is. God is doing something on planet earth. Will your tradition or your thinking or whatever it is stop you from taking on what God is doing in our land? Or will we have an open mind? Will we say, God, have your way? The early church had liberty, joy, power, authority, and they are all fruitful. Ladies and gentlemen, sour grapes is not a fruit of the Spirit.
I've seen people that look like they've had the baptism of the lemon juice. Joy. How many people can do with a bit more joy? God bless you, brother. <laughs> power. How many can do with a bit more power? Come on, it's all right to say hallelujah in this place. How many want a bit more authority? And they were fruitful. When Adam sinned and lost his power and the curse of death came upon mankind, Satan only had power to deceive man. I want to... I indelibly print this in your mind. The only power that the enemy can have over you, a Christian, is the power of deception. Has God said, if you are, deception can come into our mind and we believe a lie. And when you believe a lie, that's what will happen. You will confess that lie. You will speak that lie. Only had power to deceive man, but God never ever lost his power over Satan and the herds of, of demonic forces. Amen. Let's just have a little bit of a Bible study. Let's go right back to the beginning of time. In Genesis chapter 3. We know the, we know the fall. We know how the enemy came to deceive Eve. The Bible says that the enemy was more cunning the serpent was more cunning. How many people know he's cunning? He gets you when you're hurting. He gets you when you're, when you're broken. He gets you when you're whatever, when you're at your weakest. Verse 13, And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. You see, we may not be eating apples or whatever fruit it was, but if, you, if the enemy comes with a lie to deceive you and you eat it, or you take it on board, or you receive it, or you accept it, you are done. We understand the downfall that happened as a result. The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the servant, immediately he heard these words. The devil's there most probably with his chest puffed out, thinking I, I've, all, I've got in and I've deceived this creature that you've created. I've deceived him. Ha <laughs> ha. They've lost their power. They've given their power to me. You see, when the, when the devil said to Jesus, if you worship me, I'll give you this power because it's been given to me, and I can give it to whoever I want. He was telling the truth. If he wasn't telling the truth, Jesus would have said, you are a liar. But he knew that, he'd been, that what had happened and deception had come in and, and that the devil had stolen something. And now here he comes and and he's at this position, and Eve, what, how did this happen? What's going on here? It says, this serpent deceived me, and I ate. And immediately, the devil might have been there. Oh, shakabundi. No, he wouldn't be saying shakabundi. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. What a... Oh, Santa Claus. <laughs> he most likely, most likely would have been saying, ho, ho, ho. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he, Jesus... God immediately turns around and he says, because you have done this. Ooh, I tell you what, 
I want the power that God has. Amen. I want that same power. Because you have done this, you are cursed. Everybody say, Satan is cursed. More than all the cattle, more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go. You're going to eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, but you shall, but he shall, you shall bruise his heel. We're going to bruise our heel, crushing his head. You believe that today? <laughs> A lot of good people are deceived. I've been one of them. When he said that, the devil never said, you can't do that to me. He said, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Satan is cursed by God. I want you to have a look with me in the book of Luke chapter 10. Anybody else enjoying this this morning? I'm having a good time. I don't like the devil. Can I hear an amen? I don't like the devil. He is a bad devil. And I don't like him. Wonder that was the wrong verse. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. And when the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Jesus sent out his disciples, sent out the 70. Disciple is anybody that loves Jesus, not just the 12. And they said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Do you like those words? I oh, man, I've had a ball this week just in just getting this ready. I, I, I got it ready on Monday, I think. <laughs> but I've been doing it every day since. <laughs> I saw Satan fall like night lightning from heaven. Behold. Now listen to this. Roy, you listen to this. Behold. I give you the authority. Not just authority. I give you the authority. There's a difference in that in there. I give you the authority. Not just something there, doctor. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You see, Jesus says because of his position, he knows what is given to the church. He marvels why we don't use it. That's why we had the prophetic word this morning. How long before you go? See, you, you, we're, we're, we're a team. Glory to God. <laughs> how long before you're going to realize? How long before you're going to get up? How long are you gonna, before you stand your ground? How long before you're going to claim what's yours? Or are you just going to continue to play tiddlywinks with the devil? Marvel not. That's a give me. But marvel that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, what an amazing thing. I saw Satan fall. We had communion this morning. He says to us, do this in remembrance of me. You know, we're at this silly season right now. But you know, most of the world, their remembrance of Jesus is a baby. It's all they remember. They have this little baby Jesus. Oh, how precious. 
And that's a good thing. It's a, it's a great thing. Remember me, not only a baby in a manger, not only on a cross. When we had the children's church in the sunshine in um, Brisbane, a little Catholic girl came up to me one Sunday morning and took a cross and she showed it to me. She said, have a look. And I looked at this cross and on one of the arms there was this little hand hanging there. And I said, oh, it's lovely. She said, yes. She said, last week, Children's Church, you were telling us that Jesus wasn't on the cross. That he'd risen from the dead and he was alive. Hallelujah. He wasn't in the grave anymore, but he was risen and he was no longer on the cross. So she said, I went home and I pulled him off. <laughs> she said, but I couldn't get this one little hand off. <laughs> I want to tell you, friends, there's some things that you and I are going to start pulling off. Religious concepts won't get the job done. Religiosity won't get the job done. She was so happy that she had this revelation. And she, I can imagine her going home. I often think of this little girl as she would have got home there and, and started a, to, to pull Jesus off the cross. I can imagine as she went into a mother and father who were most really still Catholics <laughs> and said, what have you done? <laughs> He's not on the cross, so I got him off. I pulled him off. A little child shall lead them, amen. It would be to God that we accepted the truth like a little child. But for us, it's got to filter through all our tradition and all of our wrong concepts and stuff that's been put into us. I remember a man that came to our church at the Sunshine Coast there. We were seeing, I don't know, multitudes of people getting saved every week. Miracles, healing, deliverances and stuff like that. And we had a combined meeting with another Pentecostal church and we did the worship and they did the preaching. And in our worship and praise, people were dancing and happy and clappy. And at the end of the meeting, I, this man, after he preached, he walked over to me and said, Oh, Neil. He said, Oh, Neil. And I love this man. He had a place in my heart. I really, 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 really love this guy. I honored him. I respected him. I, in my preaching, I spoke a lot about him. He said, Oh, Neil. Your church, your worship is froth and bubble. And we have deep and meaningful. Dear Jesus, you've got no idea what that did to me. I went home like a mongrel dog. Next Sunday I tried to even have a deep and meaningful church. Everybody was looking at me like a cow looks at a new gate. <laughs> On the way home, Nancy was stony silent until she opened up her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> I said, I'm trying to have deep and meaningful. <laughs> I don't have a deep and meaningful bone in my body. <laughs> Get that right. <laughs> Do this in remembrance of me. It's not a baby left in a manger. He's not just on the cross. He's not only in the grave. Praise God he did all these things. But he's a risen king who has triumphed over hell and death for us. He who knew no sin, he did it for me. Glory to God. And now... He is the commander-in-chief leading the church to conquer, not to just sing lullabies and play church. The time for playing church is over, friends. We've got to let the commander-in-chief lead us into battle. I've had people tell me, Neil, don't, don't go into warfare. It's wrong. The devil will get you. I 
I got scared out of my wits. Because as sure as God made little apples, if you start to believe that, it'll start manifesting itself in your life. Friend, I want to tell you, we have to break the ranks and go out with power, go out with the anointing, with the authority, with everything that God has ever given us and turn the Sunshine Coast right side up. Devil knows some things that the church has yet to find out. Oh, well, might as well use the Bible again, eh? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. How many people know that God is a God of war? Talks about armies. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Can I tell you this, friend? There's no devils, there's nothing in there. It's where God, where, sorry, where the devil has brought deception into your life and he has deceived you and you believed a lie. And he says, casting down those arguments that you're having in your mind. God, do you really want to move? God, do you really want... You know, a lot of the church today do, does not believe that we're going to see a revival before Jesus comes back. They believe we're going to have some, some falling, great falling away and there's just going to be a remnant left. I tell you what, Jesus has come back for a glorious church. A powerful church, amen. And the devil's going to know we exist before Jesus comes back. Casting down arguments, imaginations, and every high thing that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. Things devils that tell you, spirit world that tell you, you'll never make it when God says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Casting them down. Arguments and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Do you believe that today? Another, some more scriptures here that I believe, I believe we're going to see the fulfillment of these. Ephesians chapter 1. I know I quote these scriptures all the time. You know why? Because I continue to read them all the time myself. And I'll keep reading it, and I'll keep reading it, and I'll keep reading it, and I'll keep reading it until it breaks through the strongholds in my mind and in my imagination. And I start to believe what God says and not what my circumstances or my situation or what any devil wants me to believe. Therefore, verse 15, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom. Anybody need wisdom? Revelation in the knowledge of Him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of His calling and what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. Friend, have you got an inheritance? Or was your dad broke? My dad is not broke, hallelujah. He has given us an inheritance. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty power which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His own right hand in heavenly places far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come and put all things under His feet and gave Him to be head over all things to the church 
which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all and all. Put that up, you know, devil. <laughs> How would it be if every morning you got up and recited those until you learned it off by heart, until you're driving your car and those words are just permeating out of your being? I want to tell you, you'll find your windscreen weeping. Kukarandi <laughs> dibi if ever there's a time in history for this scripture to be fulfilled, it has to be now. People, don't die till you're dead. Turn to somebody and say that to them. Let it come out of your mouth. Don't give up while you have breath. Matthew 28, 16. Oh, Rosh. How many people love this word? Matthew. I've got a Matthew here somewhere. 28. Verse 18, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching all men to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority. He whipped the devil. He made a show of him. He went to Hades. He stripped him of his power. He took back everything that the, the devil had stolen. And he says, now all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, th go therefore, go and make disciples of every nation. And of course we read in Luke 10, 17, I give that authority to you. I give you, David, the authority. The authority. The authority. I give you the authority. Satan tries to con us. I hope you don't mind, it's nearly 12 o'clock. Is it okay? If you've got a roast in the oven, I'm sorry. Satan tries to con us, intimidate us, to get the upper hand. The Bible says if you deny Christ, he has no option but to deny you. If we're basting ourselves in self-pity, oh, Lord, you don't know the trouble I've been. Oh, you don't know the devil's attacking me. We can go on and on. Oh, God, you know, this arthritis. If we keep basting ourselves in self-pity, God, you don't love me. You healed that other lady in the back seat last week, and here I am, I got the same problem, and I didn't get healed. You touched him and you touched her. Oh, you don't love me. You know what you're doing? You are denying Christ. And if you talk like that, he has to deny you. He has no option but to deny you. He will not break his own rules and regulations and his own laws. But he said, but if you confess me before man, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. 
And it doesn't matter what you're going through. You've got to, somehow or other, you've got to conjure up some stuff. You're not going to lie. You're just going to speak the word. I, you know in your mind that, what, that what's ailing you, whatever it is, but you've got to stand up and you say, Jesus, you told me that you gave me the authority. And I'm putting my trust in you. I, I don't feel too brilliant at the moment, but I want to tell you I'm putting my trust in you. And I'm commanding and I'm condemning that thing that's coming against me. And in the name of Jesus, you've got to go because in the name that is above every name, you must go because when I confess Jesus, he must confess me. He has no option. You see, if the devil has conned us, if he has conned us to believe a lie and you speak a lie, you'll live the lie. But if Jesus can get in there and get the truth into us, Satan had Israel totally convinced they had no power over the Goliath. Hopelessness, depression will send you to the tent, will send you to the cave, will send you to the bottle, they'll send you to the drug, will send you to something that you don't want to go. And you might even think in your mind that thing that that is there, is, is so powerful, you've got no power over it, you'll never defeat it. It's got you. There's no way of escape. I'm just going to have to put up with it. Satan had Israel totally convinced they had no power over the Goliath. And the mighty men of valor ran to the caves and ran to their tents hiding until a young boy came on the scene. He didn't look like a warrior. He didn't have a sword. He didn't have a shield. He didn't have the weapons of war. He was just a young boy. He didn't even have the tattoos or the muscles. The beard even. It was just a young boy with a, some cheese and some bread. But he said something different to what the others were saying. He said, how dare. How dare this uncircumcised Philistine come to defy the armies of a living God? And friend, what he was doing was not confessing what the others were confessing. He was confessing God. God's ability. As I shared last week, that anointing. But Samuel poured that oil all over him and anointed him king over Israel. All of a sudden, that anointing kicked in and he stood to his feet. Don't fear, I will fight this thing. And he came at him. Not, he said, you might have a sword and you might have a spear and a javelin and all this stuff, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Church, I want to say it's time to rise up. It's time to call the devil's bluff. Amen. It's, the devil might be laughing at you. I want to tell you there, there was a man 85 years of age. His name was Caleb, and he got to a place in his life where he said, Oh, will you please, will you please, will you please let me have this mountain? It's mine. <laughs> oh, 
Will you please let me have this mountain? It's mine. And all those that are on the inhabitants of the mountain, the strong men, the warriors, and all those people that had dug in, they were ready to go. And they look at this old fella, 85 years of age, and he comes running down. Hallelujah! The mountain's mine! It's mine! It's mine! It's mine! And they would have been laughing. They would have said, ho, ho, ho! <laughs> and there might be some people laughing at us, bunch of old buddies they call us. But I want to tell you, we're going to run down that mountain and we're going to say, this mountain belongs to us. Hallelujah. I don't care what they call us. I can imagine it. This <laughs> He's running down the hill. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. And they're thinking, oh, whoa, look at this silly old turkey. And all of a sudden... They notice some of their great warriors coming out to say, Will, I'll take him. Boom, take dead. Another one, dead, bang. Oops, there goes another rubber tree plant. They said to the ant, it couldn't be done. And then all of a sudden, oops, there goes another rubber tree plant. Oops, there goes another. Oops, there goes another. Oh, oops, there goes another one. You all think I'm mad. You're laughing at me now. <laughs> now you're laughing with me. Because you know what I'm saying is true. You know what I'm saying is true. You know it's truth. Running down that hill. One after the other, the mighty men started to follow. And it wasn't too long before old Caleb was standing at the top of that mountain. It's mine. 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 We took Keel Mountain years ago. There's still some more mountains to be taken. Commander in chief says, Come. The commander in chief says, Come. Come. There's a fresh wind, there's a fresh fire. There's a fresh move of God. I can feel it. I can sense it. God wanting to breathe over us. God wanting to move over us. Just open up your hearts right now where you sit. God, I want to be part of this great revolution. I want to be part of this great revival. I want to be like Caleb. I want to say, give me this mount. Give me this mount. Give me this mount. Give me this mount. 